The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. And so I'll introduce our, uh, our first speaker, TechChoice President, Vulcan Materials Company in Springfield, Virginia. Tech's going to talk about off-the-chart concrete mixture proportions to present the way that he is doing things. Good morning. I'm actually a director of Tech Service for the uh, Vulcan Materials uh, Ready Mix uh, divisions in uh, Virginia, Maryland, and D.C. So, um, anyway, let me... Uh, Go to the next slide. Okay, this is an overview of my presentation. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to talk to you uh, about using non-traditional fine aggregates, uh, uh, using, uh, for example, finest modulus that is greater than 3.0. Uh, also using fine aggregate with minus 200 uh, that is greater than 7%. And, uh, and just uh, Really, it, it's, uh, it, it's a presentation on, on uh, using uh, this non-traditional aggregates that are coming from uh, manufactured scene, okay, or, or the uh, finer fractions of cross Um Let me get the next slide here. Okay, get used to it. Uh, in the uh, Washington, D.C. area, uh, the, the, one of the uh, big key for us to, to trying to go to a non-traditional fine aggregate route is, is that we, we actually have a looming shortage of natural seam. And uh, so it may not be a big deal in, in other areas that are you know, already using manufactured seam and so forth, uh, but it is a big deal in, in our area because it is traditionally a, a, a fine a natural seam market. Because if you look at a, a map here, there's a Google map, Right here, going uh, on the northeasterly directions, approximately, are the mountain ranges. And through millions of years of, of erosion and so forth, uh, you do have rivers and streams that carry a lot of the uh, finer fractions and deposit them as, as uh, natural sand along the coastal area. And so, we, you know, we've been using natural sand for decades. And then, all of a sudden, you know, we're discovering that, hey, our aquarius are getting further and further away. Well, because uh, the reasons are simple. You have urban sprawl, you have supper, and now expert, and you also have uh, the NIMBY syndrome, which is not in my backyard syndrome. And uh, people just don't like to see a big gapping hole in their, in their uh, backyard, or yeah, they should not have moved right next to the quarry in the first place, but uh, they conveniently forget that. Uh, so permitting issue, trying to get new quarries permitted has been a, a challenge and because of all those reasons. And so we are being forced to bring materials from further and further away. And of course, you know, we know the price of diesel nowadays and the energy costs and so forth and getting very, very costly. Well, the beauty of it is that we do have a lot of stone quarries uh, that has, you know, decades of reserve ahead of it. We've been there with grandfather in, where, where you know, very, some of them is right downtown, very close to it. So we're looking at something like this and say, hey, you know, can we use the finer fractions from uh, the stone quarries and, and uh, use it in mixed design? Well, you know, the manufacturer saying that uh, from the stone quarry, the finer fractions has some challenges. There are barriers to it and so forth that we're going to get into it and, and talk about it a little bit. I just want to give you an example. We have a quarry here down here, uh, 
and we have a sand terminal up here. If you draw a straight line, that's a 45 mile uh, distance, okay, from the quarry. Except that in uh, issuing the permit, the, the condition of the permit from the county is you cannot truck a single pound of sand out of this quarry because you're going to go through some uh, residential neighborhoods. So if we promise not to truck anything out out there, well, it, then you can ha uh, have the quarry operate it. So uh, the the quarry is right next to a river. It's called the Rappahannock River. Uh, and those of you who are history, Civil War history buff, you know that the river is very important. Uh, anyway, so we allow to put those sand on barges coming down the Rappahannock River and make a U at the Chesapeake Bay, go up the Potomac River and go back to the uh, terminal up there. Well, that's a 200 mile distance one way, okay? On the slow boat, on the, on the tight boats, it may take a day and a half, two days to get there. And, and also the, uh, the energy cost involved is, uh, is very significant. So anyway, just to illustrate, there's a dire need for us to find uh, ways to use the uh, non-traditional uh, aggregate, which in our area is natural sand. So as I mentioned earlier, there, there are various barriers to, to the use of manufactured sand. I'll start off with the very first one, uh, the concrete finishes, uh, customers. They hate it because they say, hey, you got some sand, the manufactured sand is very difficult to close with a trial, and when you were trying to uh, finish it on a surface, it's just like, you know, you're robbing on stuff. Uh, it's, it's a problem. Then next we talk about the pump name. Uh, in, in the modern day construction, uh, pumping concrete is a very common occurrence, so the pump name <coughs> figure prominently in this equation here. It says your manufactured sand is giving me all kinds of high pump pressure. You're going to, you know, I, I hate it because it's wear and tear on the equipment and so on and so forth. Well, me as a ready mix guy, you know, if my customer hate it, I got to hate it too, right? Uh, so there's also other practical reasons where manufacturers sand tend to drive up your, your water demand. Like this is most of the manufacturers sand. And if, if I got to meet a specified water cementitious ratio, say a 0 0.40, well, if the water demand goes up, then my cementitious material has to go up, and, and that's called cost. There's a cost increase there. So uh, it, it's an issue. And uh, but in, in all this work that I've done uh, this uh, few years, I'm finding out that all manufactured sands are not equal, not created equal. And those of you that um, are using manufactured sand every day and, and, and will, will agree with me. Uh, so there, in my area, in my operations, uh, I found that I've used at least five of the uh, different types of manufactured sand. One and two is, is what I'm going to talk about this morning. And then we do have manufacturers saying that they are considered as having regular fines, more of 3 to 7 percent minus 200. And we have manufacturers saying uh, they are pre-blended with natural sand. Uh, and we also have manufacturers saying that are rounded and reshaped to, to almost to the same shape as natural sand. And, and so it, using those, uh, it, it's like using natural sand. All right. So let me get into the uh, mixed proportioning with, with a high FM sand. Uh, this is the uh, uh, sand I'm talking about with the FM of 3.66, so you round it up, it's 3.7 FM. Uh, and compare with a natural sand I have of FM 2.5 and another natural sand I have of 2.84. When we're looking at this manufactured sand here, the first question is, can we even use it? I mean, is it even worth it? Uh, I can, can I make decent concrete out of it? Can we finish it? Well, obviously, I'm here because I'm sharing a success story with you. Yes, indeed, we use this FM 3.7 and managed to uh, build a project with it. This is called the Roslyn Commons. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the uh, Northern Virginia area, this is maybe about, you know, I'd say five or six miles from the White House, uh, three or four miles from uh, north of the Pentagon. Uh, it's uh, apartment buildings with retail space in the, in the first level. And, uh, you know, it's got parking garage uh, underground and so forth. So, so we, we have completed the project. And uh, when, I, when we're looking at this, uh, how to proportion the mix with the uh, IFN scene, because first thing you go to is ACI 211, uh, the uh, proportioning table. I, I'm here at, uh, as Kevin was saying, um, that there might be other that proportioning methods other than 211 to use, but 
in general, 2.11 still works in, in my situations. So the first thing to do is to find the volume of coarse aggregate. And as you can you notice that you got FM of the, the uh, fine aggregate ranges from 2.4 to 3.0. So in my case, you got FM of 3.7. What do you do? I mean, it's, it's like it's off the chart, right? So, so hence the title of my presentation off the chart uh, proportioning here. Um, so what I decided to do is, like any engineers would do, is take those data and plot it on a graph and say, hey, let's extrapolate uh, using this graph here. OK, so we go on the x-axis, you got FM going all the way up to uh, 4.0. And then on the y-axis is the percent stone volume. And voila, I, I can actually get a, uh, a, a uh, course aggregate uh, amount uh, somewhere in the 53%. So then that is a good starting point. So we went back to the lab, use that 53% uh, proportionate using absolute volume method. Yes, we actually came out with a mix that looked pretty decent. Uh, and then obviously over the course of the uh, project, we have refined it uh, a little bit further and, and so on and so forth. So this is the, uh, just to show some pictures, uh, concrete that's been placed. This is fresh concrete that in place uh, that morning when we took the pictures. This is placed October 26, 2011. Uh, notice the concrete bucket here, finishes, finishing them and so on. This is the grass slab. And so the, the project is uh, finished. Now, I'm a realist. And, and um, I, I, I'm also here to tell you that with this sand, with this kind of effort, I won't put it in my ready mix truck. Okay? I, and this project here has some uh, very unique circumstances that allow us to use such a high FN sand. Number one, it's, it's got an on-site batch plant. You got one concrete finishing crew, and you got committed concrete contractor, the finishing crew that's got a boss. The boss says, "Thou shall finish the concrete, okay, no matter what." And and so you know, a lot of times these people are getting used to it uh, when you're, you're trying to find a way and, and get used to uh, accept the reality of the concrete the way it is, and and so there's no complaint. Nothing was pumped. Everything was bucketed. It's uh, it's got a tower crane and, and buckets. And we have liberal use uh, admixtures, uh, super plasticizer, using, even using air entrainment as sort of like a finishing aid, uh, if you believe it or not. Uh, so we were able to uh, utilize all these uh, modern admixtures in uh, getting the concrete down. Now, can we modify the high FN uh, scene in some way to make it more finisher friendly? or to put it in a, the back of my ready mix truck, okay, that I got hundreds and hundreds of finishers that I have to satisfy and, and make happy. So if, if all of them give me a call, then, then you know, I won't do anything else but feel the complaints. So I'm here again to share the success story. Yes, indeed, you, you can do that. You can use a, a very marginal uh, uh, fine aggregate and blend it with a natural seed and get a very, very decent fine aggregate. Uh, I want to talk about two projects uh, that we have completed or in the process of completing. Uh, one is, uh, and, and so, again, we go back to the same um, or similar high FM manufacturer sand, uh, 3.71 in this case, with a natural sand of 2.56 FM. And I got a, a blending table here at different uh, percentage manufactured sand that ranges from 30 to 90 percent, and uh, natural sand ranging from 10 to 70 percent, and and trying to get a uh, uh, a blend. And uh, this is uh, with 30 percent of that the high FM manufactured sand, 70 percent natural sand. Uh, the the combination is an FM of 2.9. That's traditional FM uh, finest modulus range. And, and we were actually put it in everyday concrete with this 30 percent blend. We also completed a, a pretty high profile uh, interstate uh, job. This is uh, called the I 495 Express Lane. And uh, we also had a, another project that is ongoing. It's called the Tyson's Corner Center. It's about 140,000 cubic yards and, and, uh, uh, that, uh, that we're, we're constructing. And I'll get into that in a little bit. And you notice that the FM in this case is 3.25. And I, I, I'm here to assure you that even with that kind of FM, we have no problem pumping it. Uh, obviously, it takes some skill in proportioning the, the mix so that it can be, uh, can be pumped. And we'll get into it 
get into it a little bit. All right, the Tyson's Corner Center project is, again, a high-end office building uh, with hotels and stuff like that. And let's talk about the mat foundation, 38,000 cubic yards just in the mat alone, ranging from 3 to 8 cubic feet. Uh, it's a mass concrete. And, and again, uh, as I said, we use 60% manufactured sand and 40% natural sand and pump every bit of it. And two pumps going on, and it may be as high as 2,500, uh, 2,000 cubic yards a night. Uh, and and uh, we had no problem pumping it and, and, uh, and so forth. And uh, some of the techniques that come from ACI, actually, uh, there's a, uh, in ACI 204.296, addition that this may not be in the later edition of 304.2, uh, but there's a, a, a pumpability analysis in there uh, where this is a, a graph that I've used for years. They, I know that if I put the gradations on the, if the gradations tend up to be on the, on the right hand side of the combined gradient, I mean, uh, then it's very pumpable. And uh, this is the uh, individual retained uh, uh, technique and analyzing the mixes come from ACI 302 floors and slabs. And if I, I know that if I get this kind of, uh, you know, somewhat of a modified haystack uh, with no gap grading, I, I can pump that mix real well. So even with FM of 3.25, and no problem pumping it. Uh, next is the, uh, as I mentioned, is the four, I-495 express lanes. Uh, those of you that read the, uh, uh, pay attention to uh, politics, um, you know, sometimes the paper talks about the beltway politics. So where the heck is the beltway? Uh, for those who are familiar with, you know, in the D.C. area, this is the beltway. It's 495. It's a, a loop surrounding and closing uh, Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Congress right smack in the middle of it. Uh, <clears throat> there's a project that runs from this interchange. It's called the Springfield Interchange all the way up to Tyson's Corner, uh, 14 miles with 50 bridges in that 14 mile span. Uh, it's a variable toll road, the $2 billion PPPA project or public private under public private uh, transportation act project. Uh, and uh, so 180,000 yards in about four year period. Uh, and uh, probably about, I say, you know, by the time we start using this, this plan, we, we may have done maybe 30% or 40% to a satirian or project. And, and no issue with it is uh, uh, the Virginia DOT uh, likes it, the contractors and so forth. Everybody uh, was raving about how, how well the mix performed. So that's another success story. Uh, next I want to get into is mix proportioning technique with uh, sand with very high fines. Let's look at how high, it, well, before we get into that. Uh, in a lot of stone quarries that you go to, probably uh, in the United States, you see this pile of of material is it's actually called microfines or palm fines. Just have a sense of scale here. Look at the uh, the cat loader up here, okay, and then the utility pole down here. You get a sense of scale. This is a big waste pile, all right. So like any uh, good business owner, you got to ask yourself: Is there some way we can use this waste in a beneficial way? Um, and well, what the um, some custom uh, manufacturers did was back in '92. They spent some uh, <coughs> funded this uh, research center called the International Center for Aggregate Research uh, at the uh, University of Texas in, in Austin, is, uh, and and it's also uh, jointly run by Texas A and M University. Uh, to uh, you know, a couple of decades of all the research work that's done here. I don't know how many PhD students was funded by this uh, program, but there are quite a few. And they have produced uh, uh, multiple um, research reports and, and theses that confirm that, yes, indeed, you can use those high fines in a many, many beneficial ways. Okay, you can actually make good concrete out of it. And uh, so one of the things they did is say, okay, the, the high fines obviously uh, cannot exist by, all by itself. Well, what about the fines that are blended with uh, uh, manufactured sand or leaving the finer fractions in the manufactured sand? That would be a vehicle of getting the fines into the concrete, okay? And they have studied uh, several different sources of manufactured sand 
uh, with the high finance manufacturing sent throughout the, the country. Uh, you notice that in their study, the uh, minus 200 went up to as high as 16.7% with different mineral sources. You got limestone, granite, quartz, uh, and, and so on and so forth. And uh, just as a comparison, the minus 200 for natural sand is typically less than 1.5%. So in this study here, uh, what we did there, again, is, is uh, we're, we're trying to uh, combine, have a marriage of two material with a high finance manufacturer sand and, and another natural sand. We put them all together. And it's a, it's a marriage made in heaven in, in the sense that, uh, that it produced very, very good concrete. Uh, I just want to give you an example here. This is a 25% blend of what we call the number 10 dry screenings uh, with a 75% natural sand. Notice that the minus 200 of the uh, combined high agri is uh, um, uh, 9% and the minus 200 5%. And there's a significance of that uh, uh, that I want to go into. Let's assume that your mix has 1,400 pounds of this combined aggregates. So what you end up with is about 126 pounds per cubic yard of the minus 100 material or 70 pounds per cubic yard of the minus 200 materials. Well, let's go to an example here. Assuming that I have 500 cubic yards, 500 pounds per cubic yard of cementitious material and, and uh, you know, it's working well, strengths and all the properties and slums and so forth, uh, working well with three ounces per hundred weight water reducer. Well, if you forget for a minute that it's not a minus 100 material, okay? Uh, let's say if you put that 126 pounds of that material in there as flash, uh, or you know, 70 pounds per cubic yard of, uh, of that fly ash in the mix, you obviously need to make some sort of adjustment. Uh, otherwise, your water demand is going to go up. Okay? The other thing also, uh, let's recognize something here. In uh, the ACI 237 uh, guide for proportioning cell consolidating concrete, they say in that document, it says anything that's minus 100 material is actually called powder. Okay? And the minus 200 material, if you go to ACI 116 terminology, you'll see that it defines uh, a mineral filler as anything that's having a greater than 65% minus 200. And so, in essence, then what we, we have done here is add 126 pounds of powder or 70 pounds of mineral filler to the mix. And again, it calls for some adjustments. And uh, what I found is that if you uh, consider those as powder or mineral filler or fine material and adjust your, your water reducer doses accordingly, you can actually maintain the same water demand without, you know, with, with no increase in, uh, in your water content. And hence, uh, your, your strength is going to stay either at, at a minimum uh, equal or in some cases actually higher when you make those adjustments. Uh, so this has been a, a good uh, uh, technique for me. Anyway, so that's the end of my presentation. Uh, before I take any questions or if you've got time for questions, I just want to summarize my presentation and, and saying that, yes, indeed, you can use non-traditional aggregates. Uh, there are some proportioning techniques. You can use different kinds of uh, uh, techniques similar to what I use. And, and and get some good concrete out of it. And the bonus for us is that we were actually able to uh, increase the lifespan of a natural sand quarry. One particular sand quarry was supposed to, you know, it's supposed to be pretty close at mine uh, in, in you know, X number of years. We were actually able to almost double the lifespan of natural, natural sand deposit. So anyway, thank you. Kevin, are you going to ask a question? Or? I have a question from one of the uh, webinar which is you imply that the, uh, the manufacturer is saying there's a higher water demand and you need more cement to overcome that. And the question that the, um, the person on the, on the internet has is, why don't you just use a higher water to cement ratio and not increase the sand content? Well, you can do that too. Obviously, it depends on the performance that you're trying to get. And uh, so, 
you know, the, the, the door is open. Uh, you can keep the uh, uh, using the same amount of cementitious material and let the uh, water main ratio go up or down, or what have you. Or, you know, you can keep the, uh, uh, the water main ratio constant. Anyway, Kathy, you want to use the mic? Thank you, sure, the, the type of FM sand, mm -hmm. right? obviously it was higher than the 2.3 to 3.1 ratio. Correct. Uh, not only the specifiers want, uh, have you had all positions to convince the specifier that your higher FM is acceptable? In that project that we completed, uh, uh, the um, structure engineer, engineer appeared to have no problem, no issue with what, what, we, uh, uh, what we come up with. Um, so. So that, that was a success story. I, I don't know about other projects. Obviously, it varies from project to project. 